Another day, another episode. This one is about images and how to get them displayed in the game. Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. As mentioned, we will add images, but before we do anything new, let's do a quick recap from the previous episode. If we start up the game and just take a look at what we have, we still have this code, the extra code that was added at the end of the episode. But if we scroll down and take a look at the code, we added the game loop last episode. Here we have it. We have the good game loop and we also talked about why we don't use repaint and repaint only in the, in the paint component class. Well, that was pretty much it. We added the game loop and talked about some of its component and why we use nanotime instead of just seconds, etc, etc. And we also have room to add the update per second, but that's gonna come a bit later. Not in this episode, I don't think. So. Let's begin this episode by removing the extra code we added at the end of last episode. So let's go to game panel. So let's just take this entire class, the myRect class. And we can remove that array. We can remove this method and this array list as well. And we should have one in here. And uh, yeah, we can remove this too. We don't need that. And we can remove this one too. We don't need that. All right. I think that is good enough. What is the first thing we need to do in order for us to, well, get images working? Well, we need somewhere to store the images. So right click on our project, new, and look for something called source folder. And we're just gonna call it res for resources. And now music, images, etc., we place inside this res folder but we also need some images. So let's go grab one. And luckily I have an image here. I'm just gonna drag it into the rest folder and click okay. And make sure we have a copy. So if I open it and double click it, here is our player Atlas. You might recognize this fella. You've probably seen him once or twice in the tutorial so far. And it's also been part of a few thumbnails, but yeah, this is the character we're gonna use as the player. You can download this from my website or on GitHub. And when you have the image, then we can close it down and we can start using it. But there's a few things that I would like to sort out before we start using an image, and that's changing the size of the game window. So let's go to our game window class and remove set size. And we're gonna save that. Then we're gonna go back to our game panel. And inside here, we're gonna add a method called set panel size. And let's create that method. And we are actually going to decide the size of our game window inside the J panel, even though J frame is, well, the frame to the game. And that's because when we set the size in game window, our J frame here, we had 400 by 400, but that's including the border and the top bar. That would make our playable game window not 400 by 400. It would actually be smaller than that. So that's why we're gonna determine the size in the panel. And then we're gonna tell JFrame just adjust to the size that was set in the panel. And the way we set the size in JPanel is by calling something called set minimum size, maximum size, and preferred, right? Yeah, preferred size. So we start by minimum size. And for some reason, they want a dimension object, not pixel like 400 by 400. So we're just gonna create a dimension size equal new dimension. And here we can determine the size. So, hmm, let's go 1280 and 720. I think that's a good match. 800 actually, because we're gonna use images that are 32 by 32, so this will even it out at 40 tiles wide and 25 tiles high. And that's because our images is gonna be 32 pixels by 32 pixels, and this will even it out so no tile would be outside the border. So that's why we're gonna pick 1280 by 800. So now when we have this size, all we do is just pass that size in. For set minimum, set preferred size, and also set maximum size. And inside our game window where we had JFrame, before set visible, we say JFrame.pack. 
And when we are calling JFrame pack, all we're doing is telling JFrame to fit the size of the window to the preferred size of its components. But we only have one component, so it's going to look for, well, the only component we have, which is JPanel. And there we had 1280 by 800. So it's going to create a window that fits a JPanel by that dimension. And then we're going to add a couple more lines here. We're going to add a jframe.set resizable false. We don't want to resize the window. It's going to look terrible. I think that is all. So we don't want it to be resizable. And we tell jframe to, well, we had one component. Look at that component and make the window big enough to fit that panel. So let's run the game and see what we have. All right, so we have a 1280 by 800. Perfect. We can actually remove all the code for the rectangle because we, we're not going to use it anymore. So let's just remove the rectangle, remove the update method, remove the get color, the random color. Um, we can keep delta because we're going to have an image and then we want to move the image. So that can stay. We don't need a random. We don't need the random there either. The color we're not going to use. Let's remove the directions as well. Let's just make sure that there is no bugs. Nope. And then we have a lot of imports that we can remove for now. We don't need the yellow line. And inside our paint component method, now when there is nothing here, we're going to call g.draw image. There's a lot of options here, but we're going to use the third one here that calls for a image, int x, int y, and something called an image observer. So we're going to click that one. And well, first we need an image to pass in here. And then we want to say what position should it be? X, Y. And then we have something called the image observer. And the image observer is something we will never use. So we will always give it a null value. But it's used for monitoring the status of the image before it's fully drawn. And this is something that we will never use in this game. So we will always set it to null whenever we are drawing an image. So let's go ahead and draw our image. But we cannot do that yet because even though we have our image in the rest folder, we have not yet imported it into the code. So it's just sitting there. And we're going to use something called a buffered image. Private buffered image. And we're going to call it image for short. Then we need to import it. And inside the constructor, we create a method here called import image. And let's go ahead and create that method. And we can remove that. And there is many ways to import an image, but I'm just going to stick with the one that I know best, that I know works. And it's also the same way we import images in our previous tutorial, the tower defense. First, we begin with something called input stream. And they are usually called is equals get class dot get resource as stream. And then we need the name of the image. And our image was called player underscore sprites dot dot png. That's very important. And it's important that we place the a slash here. Otherwise, it's gonna, not going to find it. And this slash is telling the game that the image can be found in one of the folders and not next to one of the folders inside our project. And this line of code is taking in a image as a input stream. And then we can use this input stream to load that image. And we're going to do it by saying image is equal to image io dot read. And then we have four possible options and a file image input stream, input stream, or URL, but we had a input stream and we finished that off and we need to have it inside a try and catch. And a try and catch is like a stronger if check. It's trying to do something. If it can't, then it throws an error. And these try and catches are used most often when you're trying to load something, a file, or when you're trying to save to something because the path might not exist. So it gives you an error and crashes usually. And then it tells you also why it failed. 
Could be that the input doesn't work or the name is wrong or whatever it might be. But these few lines of code will now take our image in the rest folder and load it into our buffered image image. But before we're gonna start it, we need to go down and look at our paint component and just comment this section out so we don't get any weird errors. Let's start the game and see if we get any errors. No errors. The FPS is ticking, so we know it's working. Now, let's see if we can draw that image. So, we're just gonna draw image at position zero, zero, and set image observer at null, because we're not gonna use that ever. And there is our entire image. Cool. Drawing this entire image is not gonna do us much good. We just wanna draw a little part of this image. We wanna draw the top left sprite of this entire sprite atlas. And we can do that easily. And that's because when we're working with buffered images, we can draw a specific section of that image. So image dot sub image. Here we get to decide where we should start and how much we should draw of it. So we start at the top left of the sprite, not the window. So zero, zero. And this player character is actually not going to be 32 by 32. It's actually based on a 64 by 40 size. So we need to specify width 64 by 40. So that should in theory give us this top left guy in this sprite atlas since it's 64 by 40 and we're starting at zero, zero. So let's give it a try and see if we do. And we do have him. Perfect. But he is kind of tiny. So let's double his size. And here we have the image. Here we have where we want to draw him. But when we had g.drawImage, and we're using the third one to draw an image, and it requires a image, x and y in the observer. But we can also select this one where we decide the same values, but we also have a width and height. And that is gonna determine how big the image should be drawn. So let's use the same line, but add a width and a height. And we wanna double it, so 128 and 80. So now the width is double and height is also doubled. So let's give it a try. And he is bigger, perfect. But what if we wanna draw another sprite in the Sprite Atlas? Let's uh, let's take a look if we have someone that will stand out a little bit. Uh, let's grab this guy at the very bottom, the second sprite at the bottom. But when we're working with sub images, let's just create another buffered image. So sub image, let's just call it sub image. And instead of image get sub image, all of that, we say sub image, the one we just created. And right above it, we can say sub image is equal to the sub image, but we wanted the other one, which will be X will be one and Y would be eight. But we need to multiply it by the width, which is 64 and then eight times 40. So this would just be 64, but this is easier to see. So let's see if we can get this fella right now. Everything is supposed to work, so let's give it a try. And we did, perfect. Let's see if we can control this sprite as well. And I think we can do it rather easily by just saying x delta and y delta. And it was floats, that's correct. So we need to cast them over to integers again, like so. And let's take a quick look in mouse inputs. Mouse move, mouse clicked. We don't call anything, so for mouse moved, we call game panel dot set rect position e dot get x and e dot get y. Even though it's not a rectangle anymore, it's an image. And for mouse click, we're not going to do anything. So let's give it a try and see if we can control our character right now. And we can. Our keyboard works as well. Beautiful. I don't think we need to do more in this episode. We have imported an image and made a buffered image object. Not only can we draw the entire sprite atlas, 
but we can draw a smaller section of that called sub-images. So I think this is a great stopping point for today. If you have any questions or comments, post them below or on our Discord server. If you wish to support the channel, there is a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page. Until we meet again, take care now and I hope to see you in the next episode as well. Bye!